This is part one of a very special bedroom makeover. It's my mom's bedroom. She has been away for about five months and is on a flight back today. I deliberately plan on this going live while she's in the air so she won't see it. This bedroom was formerly the garage. We purchased this home with it having already been converted. We did do some further renovation before moving in. We took a part of it and added the laundry room. The one thing I have always struggled with was the tiny window they installed. This bedroom sits at the front of the house and right next to the other guest bedroom which has a larger window. So it would have made sense to have them the same size. However, I do plan on changing the light fixture and lightening up the wall color to help brighten it up a bit. I'm also going to DIY a simple windowsill. Behind the bed I'm adding an accent wall using shiplap with a small shelf and DIY gallery rails. I priced out gallery rails for this length of wall and it is pricey. Mine cost under $100 and turned out amazing so stay tuned. The floor tile is ugly but that is also staying for now. We started by clearing the room. I sold or donated everything except the bed. That's the only thing that would be coming back in. We're gonna get started by removing the TV, the curtain rod, the blinds. I was so happy to see those blinds go. And we're gonna get some repairs done. Good prep is so important in any makeover, whether it's a small DIY craft project, a furniture flip, or in this case, repainting. As I was getting up close with the wall, I noticed one of the baseboards was lifting, so I reattached it and added some caulking. I used a quick drying joint compound on the walls, but still gave it a few hours, sanded it smooth, and cleaned up everything. Once it was all cleaned up, I took the measurements and planned out the accent wall. This wall is a little less than 13 feet wide and since I'm only going two thirds up the wall, I'm getting three 4x8 panels and I'll cut out the rest from the leftover pieces. This is the inspo for this project and I'm going to take it a step up and add some trim on the underside and that DIY gallery rail I mentioned earlier. I'm using the same paint I used in two other bedrooms. I had purchased enough back then to cover this room and since I'm heading over to Home Depot to get the supplies for the wall, I'm taking those buckets over to get it shaken. I will be spraying everything so I want to make sure it's stirred up nicely. And no visit is complete without a quick stop at the oops section to see if there's anything interesting. These little sample paints are 50 cents and I usually grab them if they're colors I think I'm likely to use on a small project. And just so you know, here at the oops section, the quarts are $2, the gallons are $9. These are returns, so the colors are random. And if your local Home Depot has nice attendance like I have, they will even add some tint in there if you wanted to shift the color slightly.
Now back at the ranch, just kidding, back at my very humble home. It is the next day and I am getting prepped for painting. I don't have a lot of time to get this done so I opted to spray everything all at once. That is the ceiling, the walls and the baseboards. Big thank you to the folks at Enocraft for sending me my new Max Spray M1 sprayer. This could not have come at a better time and let me tell you, I was able to get this room done in less than 30 minutes and keep this project moving right along. You guys are used to seeing me using my finishing sprayer on furniture flips but this is my first time using a pro grade quality sprayer as with any new tool it can feel a bit intimidating but i was able to get this set up and running in no time it came with lots of accessories even an eye mask which was so thoughtful that hose is 25 feet long which is perfect for some bigger projects i have planned later this year i still have some prep to do before loading this up so let's get that done and i'll show you this sprayer's secret to getting a newbie like me up and running in just a few minutes This right here is what makes this sprayer stand out from the rest. A clear and easy to follow setup guide and a reference guide for quick troubleshooting. Perfect for someone like me that's never used a professional sprayer before and I don't have to waste time rubbishing through pages and pages of every language known to man. After priming the pump and filling the hose and gun with paint, I did some tests and wow, this thing is amazing. It'll take a few projects for me to get the hang of adjusting the pressure to get a better spray pattern, but I did notice right away there was minimal overspray. This thing is so much fun to use. I don't think I want to go back to a roller after this. It does come with a 12 inch extension tip, but this room is only eight feet and I was able to do the ceiling without the extension. It also came with a 515 airless sprayer tip included so you don't have to get that separately i mean priced at an msrp of under 300 dollars i think it's an exceptional value especially compared to the graco magnum x5 i cannot wait to do more projects and dial in the settings Well, this is the fastest I was able to paint an entire room. With any paint sprayer, cleanup is always a concern or one of the things that make you just chuck the idea of spraying altogether. But cleaning this sprayer is quick and easy and doesn't take time away from your project. Just attach it to a garden hose and flush it out. Now let's get started on that accent wall. I'm using these 4x8 panels I got at Home Depot. I had them cut each one to about 60 inches, which is around two thirds the height of the wall, including the baseboards. The width of the wall is a little less than 13 feet, so I got three panels. For that extra 10 inches or so, I'm going to cut from the excess and make it up. I'm using an adhesive and that little device there that's used for caulking. This is the one tool I absolutely detest. I find it so cumbersome and a nightmare to use. So my husband stepped in as I grumbled about it. <laughs> Plus, you do need someone to help you with this project. We also use the nailer to hold it in securely. I'll be coming home I 
For the shelf, I'm using a 1x4 and these floating shelf brackets. I got them on Amazon. They come in different lengths depending on the depth of the shelf. I got 3 inches and I'm placing them about 18 inches apart. The main thing with installing these is to ensure you drill the holes straight in. So to help with that, I got this jig also on Amazon. You just attach it and it guides the bits so it's nice and straight. One thing to note if you want to try this, these brackets are a bit of an odd size. We started with a 10 millimeter bit, which was too small honestly i don't remember what size bit we ended up using but we tried several until we got it to slide in comfortably I was so happy to find corking that came in a tube so I didn't have to struggle with that gun. Oh my goodness, I swear that thing is made for men and big hands. This toothpaste tube is more my style. I painted everything the same wall color and now the last step is adding DIY gallery rails. If you're not familiar, these are what they look like. Those spindles are usually metal and come in different shapes, but they can run really expensive, especially for a shelf this long. I thought they looked like chess pieces, so I purchased a box on Amazon and I'm going to recreate them. This in total cost me much less than $100 as opposed to over $300 since you do have to buy each piece separately. For me, it actually only cost me the chess pieces since I'm using dowels I already had. And I did run into a box of chess pieces later at the thrift store, so that's a great option to keep the cost down. To do this, you're drilling a hole the size of the dowel. I used quarter inch dowels and the trick here is to make that hole as straight through as possible. I used a screwdriver to make a pilot. I strutted out with these eight pawns, but some of them are just not going to come out right these are made of a soft wood so a few are going to split the good thing is you have eight other pawns from the set i did them all and then used the ones that turned out the best
Now let's give this little window a bit of an upgrade. I do like that it has a very deep ledge. This area can be used for things like live plants. The challenge here is nothing is ever straight. And this here is as much as a quarter inch off from the front to the back. I did a little sketch, drew it out on the board I purchased earlier and cut it as best as I can with my table saw. I made the cuts conservatively and between my sander and a hand file, I adjusted it bit by bit until it fit right in. It's not perfect by any means, but it definitely added a custom look to this area. Make sure you are subscribed and notifications are all the way on so you don't miss part 2 of this bedroom makeover. These simple DIYs really really added such a special touch to the overall design of this space and with it all decorated I think this was my best makeover yet.